Greetings, everybody. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming this evening. I'm Sally Jane from Travelsmith. And if you don't know where we're located, because you might have found us in maybe in the newspaper or maybe from one of your uh, senior communities or email blasts or Facebook, but we're right here on Route 88. We're uh, Route 88 at the base of the bridge and Arnold Avenue meet. I am the owner, I'm Sally Jane Smith, and I have 26 team members that are amazing. 14 frontline advisors, and I have an incredible backup groups specialized all over the world. Today with us, I do have Caitlin Keller, and I have Lisa Coleman, who are our travel advisors that are here. If you call and, and call into our office, you're gonna speak to this young lady behind the phone, that is Jenna. Jenna is the one that will take care of getting you to the right advisor for whatever the product that you're actually looking for. And then of course we have Mr. Tom McTie and Jose. Jose, what, I know your last name. Serrano. Serrano, I do know that because I do his travel, my goodness. This, these, this dynamic duo over here is 100 Consulting Group and they do take care of our website and our marketing and Facebook and this evening we will be videotaping so uh, we'll be sending it out to guests that have, weren't able to make it this evening. It'll be a link and also if maybe you didn't remember what maybe we were speaking about because we talked about a lot of different things, you can just go back and review and it does help people because then you find out about our promotions again. And today we are specializing in CIE tours and tonight we'll be re representing is John Raish and he is amazing, we love John. And he's gonna talk about Ireland, Iceland, Scotland, Italy, and all the fabulous destinations that CIE Tours goes to. And then later this evening, I will introduce you to, hello, Barbara, you made it. Hey, Dennis. I'm gonna wait. They made it. It was a hike, but I know they, they had traffic. <laughs> you knew it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to John so he can give you a beautiful presentation. Before Sally goes away, everybody, I've known Sally is since I started in this industry. I, I'm not that old. We all know that. But I've known Sally as long as I've been in this industry. She was the first person who ever called me back into her office and said, John, you know, there was a mistake on that email. You, you, know, you should really check your spell check. And so I've had a big connection with this girl. <laughs> for 14 years so well, I should say, she actually booked my wedding. And so I always say, never trust the skinny chef, guys. I use Sally. Sally and her team are phenomenal. If you, if it's, has anybody used Sally before? Okay, all right, perfect. So we're, we're in the right room. But if you haven't, Sally and her team, her girls over there, phenomenal. Like I said, I, I, I love her to death. Love her to death. All right, so. CIE Tours, guys, does anybody know CIE Tours? Okay, so that's good. We're starting now on a good foot. So I'm only going to run through a couple tours here. Uh, so CIE Tours, primarily people know us as coach tours in Ireland, but we sell way more than Ireland here. And so I'm going to run through this presentation. Sally did my destination wedding, and my daughter right here, um, I work... I work for an Irish company now, and my daughter was born on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> and so, you know, it, it's, a, it's a really unique thing, and so my wife has about 4,000 pictures. My daughter's, what, 15, what's that math? I don't know, 15, 16 months, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so that's Ellie, that's my daughter. I'll reference her again. Um, but, you know, we set up my house, did the whole, you know, pot of gold, and so to jump into that with the Irish team, we're gonna go into our Irish tour first. So on the table, guys, I do have my brochure here, okay? If you guys are thinking Ireland, um, let's jump over to page 40. I'm gonna run through uh, Sally and her team. They have a couple of tours on hold with us right now, some space. And so you're in the right room if you're thinking Ireland. I'm also going to run over a Scotland tour and an Italy tour as well. Um, I'm going to talk fast because I have three and I want Kelly to, uh, you know, be a star of the show as well. I don't want to steal everything from her. Uh, but if you go to page 40, guys, Sally has this reserved uh, in July. So July 7th to 15th, I believe she has reserved. So it's on page 40. If you want to follow along, let's just flip through here. So guys, this tour, the Irish Adventure, 
Um, this is going to be one of our coach tours. So uh, when I say that, people get scared. Oh, I'm locked on a bus all day long. You're not. I, trust me. Trust me. And so this one is starting and ending in Dublin. And so I call it a full circumnavigation. I always I started in the Caribbean, so I say island. Uh, but the country, it's a full circle of the country, so you get to experience a little bit of everything. Okay, you're getting country, you're getting city. Um, some of the highlights, which we'll jump into, these are pictures of me last October. Um, and so, anybody, we got, anybody know what this picture is here? I'll tell. Okay, see, okay, see, I, you guys are, are going to be good. So that, that's me at the Titanic, the new Titanic exhibit. Um, you know, they do falconry there. We have Giant's Causeway. I didn't know I was there last October. Ireland has dolphins. I was, I was walking down to the Giant's Causeway to see the stones, and there was a school of dolphins swimming. It was just, it was October. So that time of year, if you're thinking, you know, they have that experience there. So CIE tours, I'm going to run through real quick in the beginning right now what we offer, and then I'll jump into the individual tours. Um, so guided tours, coach tours, Sally has tours set up. Every single booking, you're getting this. You're getting backpacks. You're getting very important because I am my worst travel agent. I still use Sally, uh, but my work, I always forget something. And for me, I am a spoiled American and the adapters. I always forget adapters. Uh, and so we give out adapters. We give out luggage tags, the, the straps that go around your suitcases, all of that water bottles, you know, everything that you guys are going to want, luggage tags, all of that is included because you're going to forget something when you go and uh, we give that to you. And so you're going to have it. These are... I have the poncho. It's here. It, 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 it's right there. All right. So these are the tours that we offer. Um, we're looking into 2025, obviously. We did just add two other destinations um, that Sally can run through. So let's jump through some of the highlights here. There's going to be a lot of pictures coming up, and then I'll jump into the individual tour, and we'll jump through it kind of day by day for you. Um, so, you know, people only think Dublin. People think Belfast. That you know, those are the big cities in Ireland. But you have Killarney, you have um, Galway, you have the Ring of Kerry. There's a lot. It's a very. It, you think of America, you know. New Jersey is a lot different than Montana. You know, there's there's different sections and sectors of the country. Let me just jump through some of these here. Some pretty pictures for you. You know, obviously you have the Guinness factory. Uh, you have Bush Mills in the country as well. A lot of monasteries, a lot of history. You'll hear me saying, uh, you know, 200 BC. And then every time I went there, like, oh, you know, this building's new. It's 612 years old. I was like, oh, America's how old? I, I... <laughs> uh, demonstrations. You're getting a lot of sheep demonstrations. Uh, you'll see that in both countries. Here's Giant's Causeway, um, which is really cool. You have a lot of films were filmed in these little coastal towns here. Um, I grew up on I Love Lucy in Titanic. I'm 35. I still handwrite my checks. I'm an old soul. And so I'm an I Love Lucy Titanic person. I think that's kind of how I fell into this industry. I watched Titanic on VHS probably 600 times. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was really cool for me to go see that there. A lot of castles, a lot of uh, uh, cliffs here. You're going to have the Ring of Kerry, which is one of those holy crap wow factor days. And you're going to get that on this tour when you go. All right, so let me just jump back here. So again, I'll, I'll show you one last time, but like you can see, you're hitting the entire, what's really good in the book, it shows you the green and the red, it's your start and your end. And so that's the amount of days you're gonna get. So you're gonna start and end. Um, if you do decide to do this tour with Sally and you wanted to add a day or two pre or post in Dublin or anywhere else in the country, Sally can do that for you. Uh, Sally and her team, and her team. And so some of the highlights here, um, Waterford Crystal, you have, like I said, a lot of castles, a lot of monasteries. You're going to have, uh, like I said, the Giant's Causeway, which is, again, one of those wow factor type of experiences, the Ring of Kerry, and there's so much going on. These are some of the hotels that we're going to stay in, okay, which I'll jump into again. I will have a little Q&A at the end, so I, I know I'm going to go a little quick. If you guys need anything, uh, we'll go back to it. All right. So starting, 
you can either, I always recommend to arrive one day early if you can, you know, air right now. You, know, you guys are lucky. You have Philadelphia, you have Newark, you have JFK. I'm in upstate New York, so I fly to Albany. So you guys have good air. I believe there's a direct to Dublin. Nonstop. Yeah, nonstop. So you guys are good. Um, but if you wanted to, they can add a day for you. And so this is your first day you're going to arrive uh, in Dublin. And then you have a few things. Your first day, we're never going to bombard you. So this is a day in Dublin for you. And then you're going to jump over into <clears throat> uh, Galileo. You're going to do, um, what do we got going on here? So the, the ship tours, you're going to be a walking tour here. Day three, you're jumping in. You're going to do the Waterford Crystals. You know, my mom's a... 100% Polish. She thinks they have the best crystals in the world, but you know, we have the water for crystals, so I get to sell that. Um, really cool to get back. One of my favorite, favorite cities in Ireland is Killarney. Killarney is what you think of. It's not, you know, Dublin and Belfast, they're big cities. They're New York, they're Boston, they're Philadelphia, they're big, big cities. There's a lot going on. Killarney is right here. It's small shops, it's small pubs. You're going to sit. You're going to get the Irish hospitality, and I'm going to hear about your, oh, your name's O'Leary, and they're going to say, oh, the O'Leary is from 1972, and they're going to get back into your life story. Killarney is my favorite destination, my favorite city uh, in Ireland. And so I, I neglected to mention, guys, so we have an all-in, you know, it's called our all-in advantage. So what that means when you're going on a tour with us, all of the extras, the Titanic exhibits, all of the Giants Causeway, that isn't an upsell. So every all your tours are included. You have meals included as well. Your transportation's included, your hotel's included. So think of this as a, I say a 90% all-inclusive way to see the country. And, um, you do have some time on your own because we don't want you to sit in a room like this with 25, 30, 20 people. Uh, because you're not experiencing the country, so you do have plenty of free time. You're, you're going to see meals. A lot of that's going to be breakfasts and then, you know, your lunch on your way to the, your next destination, things like that. So you do have um, time on your own to experience towns like Killarney. So and then the Ring of Kerry, day four. Ring of Kerry it is have your pictures ready. I call this the Instagrammable part. If you Google Ireland, you're going to see a picture of the Ring of Kerry. It's like when you Google Vegas, you're going to see the Grand Canyon. You know, it's very similar to that over there for them. Day five, we're going to <clears throat> see some more cliffs. Um, this is, I'll get into Italy in a little bit. This reminds me of Italy a little bit. Uh, the, the cliffs that you're going to have there. Let me jump back. Um, yeah, the cliffs and more. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, we're skipping ahead. Let's see. Can I get back? There we go. There we go. Technical difficulties can go wrong, will go wrong, right? And so, you know, it's just, it's, it's beautiful country. You're, like you said, with us in Ireland, you're getting city, you're getting country, you're getting waterfront, um, you're getting a full, like you said, I, it's not just, you're not just in New Jersey, you're going to New Jersey, to Florida, to Montana, to Vegas. It's so, it, the country's different in different parts of the world here. Um, like again, here we got some more small towns in Derry. Derry, again, is going to be um, your outside of the major cities. So you get a little of <clears throat> the you know, smaller cities. This is probably my favorite day towards the end. You're going the Giant's Causeway. Like I said, that when I was there, you know, those stones that you see here, I had a picture in the beginning. Uh, it, they're, they're 30, 40 feet. You know, it's, you're like, how the hell are they here? It's, it's really cool to see and then there was dolphins there when I went there um, and then Belfast I'm Titanic 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 I love it it was so fun and if the Titanic Museum is brand new they redid it um, about two years ago so it's as modern as you're going to get really really cool experience in the last day you know breakfast is gonna be on us and then with us you're going to get the transfers back to the hotel or um to Dublin to fly back direct over to Newark, Newark, yeah. Newark. All right. So again, here's just one last shot of this tour. I know I'm kind of talking fast. I want to, I want to get through the other tours for you. I'll do a quick Q and a at the end, but like I said, you're starting and you're doing, you know, all the this is all your countryside over here. 
and then you're going to end back in the cities over there. So last year we did, this past April, we did an um, Irish tour. We had 43 people go, and it was such a huge success that we, that was the Taste of Ireland. We added in this year, so Eric is one of our uh, travel advisors who's actually leading this group. Uh, it is July, it's on the table. It's July of 2025. 7 to 15. Huh? July 7 to Thank 15. You. Now the Scottish Dream, I'm going to be hosting. So I will be uh, traveling because I haven't been to Scotland. And okay, so this is where- I I'm have at. to go. <laughs> you can't sell what you haven't seen, and so she has to go. I have to go. Tough life this woman lives over I here. Know. She travels a lot. So I, I will admit, guys, I'm going to mispronounce a lot of names here. Okay, because the Scottish I'll language. I'll help you. I'll help yeah. you. So the Welsh and Scott, I, they, their pronunciations and names, which uh, you, there might be a test at the end because I'm not very good at these names, but we'll jump through. So Scotland, anybody think in Scotland here? Okay, perfect. So you're starting in Glasgow, Hi. you're going to end in Edinburgh. And so I'll show this for you again. So this is going to be on page 66. If anybody's thinking about doing the Scottish Dream, this is going to be on page 66 of this book. Um, just so you know, on here, the dates are going to be off just a little bit. And you'll see in there, this is our 2024 brochure. Our 25 brochure literally just got printed and shipped to the offices today. And so if you're thinking, Sally will have updated brochures for you uh, when you go into the office. Okay, so obviously you're going to, I'll, I'll go through the highlights again. Everybody thinks Scotland, you're thinking golf, 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 golf. We do have plenty of golf here, plenty of castles, plenty of breweries and distilleries like you would in Ireland. But the Scot, the Scot, Scotland is known for its golf. Um, the bagpiping, again, castles over here. Uh, the, the sheepdog experiences, you're going to get that very similar in both of the countries. You'll get a, a sheepdog experience at, in, in Ireland and in Scotland. But it'll be uh, a Scottish dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the, guy might, the guide might be in a kilt for you. So my dog is actually, my dog's name is Scotch. And so... <laughs> My, I got an I got an Irish daughter. My dog is name is Scotch. Um, a golden doodle. It's not Scottish, but I, we named him that. Just fun fact there. Um, St. Andrews again, very popular here. Uh, again, we we're gonna do city. We're gonna do country. And here are some of the tour highlights. Here, let me jump through that one a little quickly for you. There we go. Again, distilleries, we got castles. Um, there isn't golf on this excursion in your free time if you wanted to do, again, a pre and a post. I always recommend one day pre or one day post. So if you need to go golfing, I am a golfer. I'm not a good golfer. Um, I actually live across from a golf course and I go to eat at the restaurant. I'm not, I don't go there to golf because it's just, it's not one of my things. Uh, Sally's husband is a big golfer. He could take you. Not good at all either. He's a better sailor. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. All right, and Edinburgh Castle, obviously, everybody knows Edinburgh Castle. Um, let's jump into some of the hotels here. The one thing that's really important to know about this Scottish dream that we are going on in August, it's during the military tattoo. And that's why we picked August, because it's only there for six weeks that they do this. And it's the massive of the, I, I can't even imagine it's how beautiful this is going to be. Has anybody done the military tattoo? Have you? Tell me how incredible. I mean, I know, and I, 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 I can't explain it because I haven't done it. And we could do this tour in October, but we don't get the military tattoo. So that's why you, if you look on the Irish flyer, if you book by a certain date, you get an additional 5% off. They don't offer that during the Scottish one because of the military tattoo. But it is absolutely magnificent as I keep hearing and I keep sending clients there, but I'm thrilled to experience it so I can tell everybody about it when I get yeah. home. So and this I tour that Sally's gonna be hosting is going to be August 17th to the 24th. And so next August, if you guys are thinking you wanna do the, that experience, uh, Sally's going to be going. Let's jump in here. Uh, this is, again is gonna be eight days. You have uh, plenty of meals included. Again, you have free time on your own. I don't wanna monopolize all of your time. And so you do get time on your own. And so, you know, you're arriving in Glasgow. I, 
usually, again, like I'll keep saying it, one day pre or post, um, but this is, I would recommend it in the front because you have a little bit longer in Edinburgh at the end. And so if you want to do a golf day, a golf experience, or some people just like to unwind because, you know, that is what, six hour difference? Yes. Yeah, six hour difference, the jet lag, um, you know. I and even though I think we end in Glasgow, we start in Edinburgh, we end in Glasgow, we will be flying in and out of Edinburgh because that is the only way you have a nonstop flight. So there you go. And it's there only an hour away. It's like going from Point Pleasant to Newark. <laughs> easy, mm -hmm. easy, easy. So it's going to be your easy day. You're going to get there. You're going to arrive your first day. It's a city tour. And uh, like I said, this is your, your more relaxing day in Scotland, followed by I grew up in Vermont. I have Lake Champlain. You guys have the Jersey Devil. We have Champ. And so the Loch Ness Monster, you know, you have it's it's big over here. You're going to have the Loch Ness uh, crews and um, obviously castles over there when you go. Uh, day three, we're continuing on, and it looks like we are doing the Loch Ness cruise. And um, again, so a lot of this is very country, a lot of lakes. Um, you know, these are they're not crystal blue, uh, but they're they're beautiful. Uh, my neighbor actually runs a scuba shop, and Scotland is big for scuba divers as well. If you ever Ooh. thought of it. Yeah, they do a lot of scuba diving Ooh. over there. Again, in the uh, Smith family, uh, they're big scuba divers as well. well yeah. And so it's a, it's a good country for that. And so I might try to get a tour with my neighbors uh, next year for that. Um, again, so here, the sheepdog experience you're going to have. And so with us, uh, we always say is these are coach tours. You know, our average is about 25, so less than this group. This is, or we have about 40 people here. So about 25 people is kind of our average. And so you have room, you get time to stretch your legs. We're not doing six hour drives. These are gonna be an hour, two hours, three hours. They're, they're quick, easy, comfortable coaches. Wi-Fi will have all of that for you. And so let's jump into, you know, again, we got more castles, we got distilleries. Uh, Ireland, Scotland, you can do all the drinking you want. You don't need to be drinkers when you go, but we obviously it's, uh, you know, scotch. We can is, go to uh, Glenfiddich. Yeah. We can go to Glenfiddich. You can do Glenfiddich. You, you know, lots of scotch experiences there. And so, again, some more dinners are going to be included here. And then, again, castles, castles, castles. This country is, I can't even so tell you. So this doesn't have on it, but, but the military, it yeah. is in our itinerary. They yes. replaced one of the excursions for going to the military tattoo. Yeah, so what you're, what I'm presenting here is for our 2024. And like I said, what she's talking about is literally just gonna be shifted one day over and you're going to have that experience that you got to experience in there as well. And so day six, you're traveling back into Edinburgh and then you're going to have your last two days in Edinburgh. You're going to be doing a oh, city tour yeah. here yeah. as well. And so like if you're looking in the in the book, it says two slash three here because you can do an eight day or a nine day. You can do it's kind of a post, um, which most people will extend by day. But if I don't know what Sally has set up for you, if everybody wants to fly home together or if you want to extend that one last day in Edinburgh, she can help obviously do that for you and will help with your air. Has, so, any, has anybody been on, have, who has not been on a bus tour? All right, so what a bus tour does for you is that it's kind of mindless. Like you, oh, they said to be down there by eight o'clock. Okay, have breakfast, get on the bus. You don't have to think about it, especially if it's the first time and you understand who has done a bus tour. You understand that it still gives you free time, but everything's organized. So it's easier to travel sometimes, especially when you go to a new destination. And then once you go, then you go independent. A lot of times people will go independent after they've done a bus tour, which is nice. Yeah. So you get to experience everything. Like I said, you get to, it's kind of uh, for people that like to do the cruising because you, you get to. The, I'm in control the whole time. You don't have to think. You just have to go. Sally's going to be there with you, and she's, you know, she's going to be her bubbly self, and you're going to have a wonderful time. But our guides <laughs> are, are are here to do everything for you. 
like I said, all, you're going to get there. Every, all the tickets are already purchased. You don't need to buy any of the tickets or um, excursions for anything. All that is taken care of for you when you go. Here's one last uh, shot. Like I said, I know I'm kind of running quick. We have Ireland next year, which is going to be in July. And then in August, she has Sally will be hosting this one over in Scotland. And so this is my love. I, I've been to Italy many, 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 many times. Um, this tour is going to be June. So Kelly, it's starting at the end of June, June 29th, and is going into July 8th. Okay, so this one here, here's some more pictures. Stacy Camarelli, took. our Italian teacher, is going to be hosting this tour. So, and what's different about CIE? CIE has a bus tour, a bus driver that is the guide. It's different than some of the other companies out there that might have two, but they're very knowledgeable, entertaining, and absolutely yeah, so, lovely. So with this, your driver is going to be Italian. He'll, you know, like you said, he'll get into the history of all the different destinations. Everything is going to be included with this as well. What's really good about this experience is you're getting the Amalfi Coast experience as well. And so a lot of people will go, I call it Italy 101, and they'll do you know Florence, uh, Venice, and Rome. But with, with this experience that they, she has set up, you're adding the Amalfi Coast as well. And so you're getting time at the end to, to uh, in Positano, you're gonna see Capri. So let's jump in. This, this is me uh, last year. This is the Amalfi Coast over here. This is at six in the morning. You will never see the <laughs> steps like this unless it, you go at nine o'clock, at 10 o'clock, there is 5,000 people on these steps, okay? So if you're there early or it's super late at night, you will get this experience <laughs> in Rome. Those are the Spanish steps there. Obviously the gondola rides, and uh, this is right out of one of our hotels. Uh, so you're right on the water when you're up there in Venice. And so if you're looking at this tour, guys, the Taste of Italy with Sorrento, you're on page 114. So page 114, if you want to look at and follow through here. So again, Italy, uh, cheese, wine, pizza that you had, um, water, history, um, medieval times. There's a lot going on here. This, everybody's seen this picture, right? <laughs> Everybody's seen this picture. Travel, 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 travel. Now, um, what's? <laughs> I've been to Italy four times now. I always bring this up with my wife. That pizza that's on your table there, it's cut. They sliced it. In Italy, they don't slice pizza. I, 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 I'm a, I'm by myself. I'm a little tourist. I sit down. I said, "Can I have a fork and knife?" And they said, "No, no, sir. We don't, we don't do that here." <laughs> and so they, they, they serve their pies. Their little individual you know, pizzas and you eat it with a fork and knife or you just pick it up and it's, you learn something new every single time that you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, Venice, obviously Venice in the canals. Um, Venice is a big opera town as well, or city. If you're big into opera, glass blowing is big in Venice as well. Uh, Florence is more your medieval town. Um, it's a little bit more populated, lots of wineries out here. I did an olive oil tastings here, uh, wineries here. The leather is fabulous, yes. ladies. Leather shops everywhere. <laughs> I have. I have Let's a, get to the real stuff, John. I have a leather jacket that I bought for myself, not for my wife. She was a little upset uh, <laughs> um, when I was over there last uh, September. I was over there. Uh, Rome, you're gonna get the Colosseum. You're gonna get the Vatican. I was an altar boy my whole life, and so I got to go to the Vatican. Um, you get the Sistine Chapel. You get to experience all of this stuff on this tour. Again, I'm kind of talking fast, but you're going to start up in Venice. So you got two days, two days, two days, and then you have the Amalfi Coast experience here. So what's good down at the bottom towards the end of the experience, guys, is you're staying here, and then you look on the little picture there. It might be a little small, but you get to experience the island of Capri and you get to do uh, Positano and Sorrento. You know, um, last time I was over there, that's not one of our hotels, but the hotel I was staying at, Justin Bieber was there. And so <laughs> it, it very fancy over there. All right, so let's jump into, you know, some of the tours, uh, some of the highlights here, you know, gondolas, wine, 
uh, museums, of course. You're going to do, um, it's not in here, but you'll do a, either a pasta or a pizza making experience when you're over there as well. Uh, Capri, Positano, and the Amalfi Coast. Those are the, the major, major highlights. Um, it's hard to kind of talk about them all because yeah. there's a lot in Italy. People don't go to Italy once. People go to Italy 7, 9, 12, 14 times because there's so much uh -huh. to do and see when you go. But you can go uh, in next June 29th with Travelsmith. All right, so day one. Johnny, we're, we're, yes. you got three minutes, baby. Okay, I'm, I'm going quick, I promise. Three minutes. <laughs> All right, 10 days. We're starting up top. We're starting. 10 in, days, oh my God. We're, we're three minutes? We're, Come on. I'm, go I'm going quick, guys. We're starting in Venice. You have your days in Venice. You're going to do your gondola rides, your things like that. Venice is good. You have all your pretty pictures. You have the water out right outside. And so you have that experience. You have glass blowing when you're up there. Followed by, I'm, I'm going through a little quickly for you we guys. We will send out a flyer, though, yes, on the day promise, by day. If you want to pass by the day by day, I could, we I, will send you out a flyer. I could talk about Italy for an hour. I know I, you I, can. I got a couple. Um, so Florence, you're going to have your gondola rides, your water, um, your, That's your opera. Yes. You have you have Florence is going to be your medieval, your Thank leather, you. your shopping, that experience. I, I uh, messed them up. Yes. I messed you up. I know. I'm, I, I'm going. I'm going to look. <laughs> Rome. Rome's going to be, you know, the Vatican. It's going to be the Colosseum. It's going to be the Spanish Steps. Everybody wants to go to Rome. You have to go to Rome. You have to see it. If you want to spend $5,000 on a purse, you can do that when you're in Rome. Okay. All right. So you do get some some leisure time when you're in Rome, like you said, to do things like the Vatican. And then my best, my most, the best part about this specific tour with us is going to be the bottom. The boot is going to be um, you know, the Amalfi Coast area. So, you know, it, you saw some of my pictures, but it's all going to be like this. You're you're on the water. This is where you have your crystal clear blue water over there. Um, you have your island of Capri, which you're going to get to right from your hotel in Positano. It's about a 25 to 30 minute ferry, depending on the water there. And you're going to get, to, again, more Positano, oh, more Sorrento, God, the Amalfi. Mm -hmm. This is uh, a lot of lemons. You'll get, you'll buy shirts with lemons all over them. You'll see it. There's lemons everywhere. <laughs> lemons. Yeah. yeah, a lot of lemoncello. And lemoncello. A lot of lemoncello. <laughs> and and yeah, you get a lot of limoncello and my my first Aperol spritz. You get a lot of Aperol spritzes there as well. Okay, I'm losing you guys. I have 35 seconds. And so, um, again, I just show you the highlight. I'm going to run off. I w I'm going to give the mic over because you guys don't want to be here till 10 o'clock tonight. Any specific questions on any of the tours, you right. can ask me now if you want to, or you know, Sally you got, and her you team. Can, if, does anybody have any questions for John? Yes. Keep it up to your yeah. Yes. So I believe both of those are going to be included in our they tour. Are. Um, but if it's something not included, Sally will run through in a way more detail than I just ran through the day by day with you. Um, St. David, I believe we're going to, the Vatican we're going to, uh, the Colosseum we're going to, the Sistine Chapel, I believe. And so... If it's a, a one-off pasta making that your cousin did 15 years ago and you have to experience it and it's not on our, our tour, that that's what you would do on your own. Um, but all of the- But we could pre-book things for you before you get there, especially if they're tickets that are in for something that might be independent, whatever's not included in the package that we can go through with the bullet points that we have included because Stacy might already have, if it says independent in that, and Stacy has already maybe have Place that in that we're waiting for the flyer to come we literally just booked it like four days ago right yeah. when i came home but we would pre-book things for you and that book is this year's i would say last year this year our brand new book that, that we're talking about for 2025 she got in her office like an hour ago i don't even have them yet they just got shipped out today and so our new 2025 brochures are going to be completely updated and sally probably has them at the office right i now. do 
I saw them. I'm like, I guess a couple more. I said, funny, I just got CIE brochures. <laughs> But I didn't look that they were 25. <laughs> okay, so like I said, I'm sorry that I got to, t I was talking really fast. I had three destinations to run through. I want to pass the baton over. Um, any other specific questions? Like I said, 95% of our everything that you see is going to be included. So any of the, the castles and the, the museums, all of that is already purchased. And so... Our drivers aren't upselling you on anything. All of that, Sally and her team and CIE is going to take care of. Yes. Anything, anything, anything. Last chance. All righty. Let's change our hats. All right, we just were on land. Now we're going to go on the sea with Azamara Cruises. And we have Kellyanne Mills. And mind you, John came from Saratoga, used to be in Albany, hours away. My little Kellyanne, she is from Tom's River, so she's close. And wait a minute, she's strutting her shoes, her little sneakers that Azamara has given that says Azamara on them. I'm like, those are so cute. I love them. All right, she's in the mood. She's got a wine. I'm I think ready. she's going to be ready to roll. All right, girlfriend, you ready? I'm ready. Hi, everybody. I was going to drink water, but wine seemed so much more interesting to me. So... I do have a very long ride to Tom's River off of Fisher Boulevard. So <laughs> my daughter is currently in Jenkinson's South gift shop working. So if anyone wants to drive over afterward and say hi to her, you can. Um, yeah, so I'm local. So I have a whole different kind of product for you guys. How many of you have heard of Azamara? Yes, that makes me very happy. So I'm not gonna go through itinerary after itinerary because a lot of people have not heard of the cruise line that I work for. Um, I came from an expedition background. So I came from small, very immersed in destinations. And when I was choosing a place to go, here is small and immersed in destinations, but different. So it was very exciting for me to be able to represent a company that can do all the things I want to do on an ocean cruising level. And it's just very different than a lot of what we've experienced before. So I'm going to teach you about Azamara. And then you guys have a note card in front of everyone's place setting and a pen. So you guys are going to teach me at the end because I have lots of prizes and it forces you all to listen to me. So <laughs> So the Azamara comes from... Um, from the sea. So it's actually Greek. And it, yeah, so Aza and Mara were two, well, it was M A R E, but they combined it and it became Azamara. We actually originally were owned by um, a larger cruise company. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. They were called Royal Caribbean. Um, but they sold us. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we are actually privately owned, which is so much better for me um, because. We don't have any of the big ships, and I don't have to memorize tons of stuff. We've got four gorgeous ships, under 700 people. So we're talking 690 per ship and 400 crew, which means that it's about a one to one and a half ratio. So when I was in the bar and the bartender walked up in front of my boss and said, you'd like a margarita? And she looked at me and said, how many times have you been in here? <laughs> It was only twice, but he remembered what I was drinking. So you're getting that level of service that you're expecting, but not that stuffy level of service. There's no suits and ties. There's no tuxedo night. There's no, you know, you, everybody is very warm and friendly on board. The crew is why everyone comes back, and the itineraries is why everybody comes with us. So they're not big ships. You can make it anywhere in the ship in five minutes. So whether it's up to the top, down to the bottom, you know, deck, I think, eight is where we end. But why Azamara? Why do I work here? And it's for the last two words on this screen. So they have something called extended destination days. But there's one thing Azamara gives back to its cruisers, which I learned firsthand, and it's time. So when you're going somewhere, you want to have the time to do stuff. You don't want to feel like, I have to go back to see all these different things. I have to go back to see this. And we've all been there. You stop from 7 to 3, and you're like, oh, I didn't see this. I didn't go on this excursion. So what we've done 
is we spend till 10 o'clock at night there, 11 o'clock at night. And if some places we even just overnight and we just stay. And when you stay, it's just such a difference. When everybody runs back to their cruise ship at three o'clock and you're still sitting in Puerto Mayo in Portugal having coffee, not a care in the world because your ship's not leaving till tomorrow. So you don't care. So it's just such a different feeling. And to give people back time is so important. But with that comes a lot of responsibility because you're not on the ship that much. So we're not gonna, we don't wanna cause any scenes when you're on board, we're just gonna include everything. That's just so much easier, right? You get on board, you're not worried. So if you want a Bloody Mary at seven in the morning, if you want a glass of wine at night, it's included. Your tips included, gratuities included, self-service laundry included. Room service at 6 a.m. while you're still getting dressed and they knock on your door because you wanted steak and eggs on a Tuesday morning, included. I didn't do that, by the way. And <laughs> but variety of dining, it's all there. There's no hassles. And when you go into these places, you walk into the center of the ship, you've got a gorgeous little cafe serving cappuccinos and espressos and light bites or whatever it is you want in the morning. You have different venues you can pick from. But the nice part of it is all four of our ships are exactly the same. So you never have to pick per ship. You don't have to say, this ship's better. I want to go on that one. Where is it going? So you can focus just on the itinerary of what you're doing. An extended destination day means 10 or more hours in port. So when you think about how, what you have time to do, you can go on an excursion in the morning. You can come back for lunch. You could go on another excursion in the afternoon. You could stay out for dinner. So like we did, when I was in Portugal in March, because I have a very tough life, some of us have to go try these things so I can teach you about them. So they had to twist my arm and send me Irish pub hopping on St. Patrick's Day in Portugal. So there's a strip in Algarve and a very top where all these people from Ireland just bought a bunch of pubs and moved there for no reason. So my boss, of course, is Irish, so she found out about it. So she's like, we're going and we're taking the day off. And I was like, I can't hang with you, I'm not Irish. So we went, and it was absolutely stunning. But we went up in the morning. We went around on a cave tour for two hours, came back, had a snack, went up, went Irish pub hopping, went back to the ship for a 1 o'clock lunch meeting with our other boss, which we were very friendly at that meeting. So we were very happy to say yes to whatever she asked us to do. Went back out, went to the local town, went walked around shopping, came back. And I felt like I never have to go back to Puerto Mino because I've seen the whole place. That's not something you do on a normal cruise ship. It's just not. It's, it's phenomenal. And my, I always joke around and I say the difference is night and day. So for your sail away, when you're at the white party, because we do one white party every cruise, I never liked white parties because I look very pale. Um, but I did it. And, what, and they gave me these sneakers to prove I was there. And what a difference, though, when the backdrop is the city at night. So you're sailing away instead of in the middle of the afternoon when you're just trying to shower and fight your way to dinner. Here you're relaxing on board. You're just looking at this gorgeous scenery when you're pulling away. And the thing we're most proud of, every trip you take is going to come with something what we call an as amazing evening. So what we do is we go to a local place. It's not something you can Google. It's not an excursion you can find. It's something totally only for our guests, so we rent out places in all over the world. So whether you're going to see the flamenco da dancers in Spain, whether you're doing you know, local cultural in Africa, here we were in Scotland and they rented somebody's castle and only our guests came to watch the performers. It was actually someone's actual castle, like the kids were looking out the window while the <laughs> guests were downstairs. <laughs> And although it was kind of silly, it made it just feel that much more authentic. And not every single person on the ship goes. Usually about three quarters will go, though. So you're talking four or 500 people, not thousands. And you're just sitting there, and there's food, and there's entertainment. And these are all included as part of your, a part of your trip. You're not paying for this. And it's just an unbelievable experience. Everyone comes home raving about it. And then, of course, we are not a river cruise company by far but we can sneak our way up some of the rivers. So we can get you closer. So an example, in France, and I know some people have learned a little bit about it, here's what a typical cruise ship has to do. Here's La Rochelle where a lot of them have to dock. And this is the city center in Bordeaux. It's a two hour drive each way 
from La Rochelle to Bordeaux and back. And it's, so that's a four hour round trip. And a lot of our guests were like, wait a minute, how are we able to do this not seven hour excursion when we're there? And we just remind everybody, we come right up here. And because we're not that many places, we pay extra. So we like bump in front of the river boats. So we actually come right into the city center because we don't do it everywhere. So we don't care. We'll just spend extra money. And we dock right here. So you're in a cafe in five minutes. And we overnight there for two nights while you're there. So now you're getting your land trip, you're getting your sailing trip, and you're having the experience without having to drive through all of this to get to the region that you want to be in. These are my favorite people, our crew, obviously. They remember people. I went with a, you know, a friend that we met, and they had previously gone with another couple. And one of the waiters came in and said, oh, where are your friends? They remembered them from the year before and recognized that we were the wrong people that were with them. So the service level is definitely top notch. And then you have your places to go. So you have the den, which is your after dinner. You want to relax, just hang out, have nice conversations, get a drink, you know, hang out. The photographer also lives in the den. So if you wanted to talk to them about whatever that he's doing. And then for those of you that want to stay up later, like the sales team that they shouldn't have put all together on the cruise ship, you could go up to the living room after the den. And that stays open until the last person leaves. It's also where you get, you know, the person might sing from 10 to 11 at night. And when I say the last person leaves, we're not the party ship. The last person usually leaves by 11 or 12, <laughs> except for when the sales team is on board and we get letters to the CEO. Then you have, <laughs> and then the cabaret lounge, which is where you're going to have your shows. So we don't do shows every single night, but they will try to do as much to keep people entertained as possible. There's only one difference on our cruise ships. Everybody has the drawing room, which is like the library where you can sit, relax, read, except for one of the ships, which is the Onward, has an Atlas bar, which is kind of like your eclectic, crazy drinks that we all say we're going to try. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> and then, of course, your cabin space. We have ocean view cabins, veranda cabins. We have suites. We have spa suites for those of us that like wellness, that want to just be in the spa as much as possible. You can book and just be in there. And you have your own soaking tub on the balcony. So really nice accommodations. And then, of course, the most important place we all know is where are we eating, right? You have the coffee shop I just talked about, Mosaic Cafe, where you get your cappuccinos. We only have one buffet restaurant on board. It's called Windows. It's indoor and outdoor. It's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's for when you just want to grab something and go. Most popular time of the day for this is breakfast. People just want to kind of grab their breakfast and run out if you don't want room service. The patio is outdoor dining out by the pool. It's kind of like your burgers, your um, chicken finger type stuff during the day when you just want light salads. And at night, it's a full sit down menu outside. Discoveries is our main dining hall. And then Privacy is the steakhouse, and Aqualina is like a Mediterranean. They're your upscale, you know, up one restaurants. This is food. This I can say I stole from my coworker Bob. Marketing doesn't allow us to use it because, as you can see, one of his escargot jumped out of the plate before we were taking the pictures. So you know it's not a marketing shot. It's his real camera because he ate part of the food. And he's like, oh, I forgot to take a picture. I'm like, we're getting so much trouble when they see us presenting this. But this is Discoveries. So the main dining room, this is the food. The food there was top notch. We never had a single complaint about what we were eating, clearly, because none of us. This is the gym. I'm taking it from this picture that it's a nice place to hang out. I did not spend any time there. <laughs> I did, however, know that if you walk around the bend, I can see them from outside. There's a wide open space where you could do classes. So they do like yoga and all kinds of stuff there. Um, it's just a really nice place to hang out if you really want to work off all the food you're eating. I did that by doing 13,000 steps a day through Europe. I was not, you know, but there were some people in there that were running or training or whatever it is they were doing. 
Then you have your shows and of course your spa. So really just an overall good experience to do. And then what do you do? So this is kind of a picture of what it looks like and how close that you are to land. It's not a huge cruise ship. So you're still small. You could still get into all these really cool ports no one else can. And you can do it any way you want. So we have something called as amazing, bleh, sorry, as Amara Ashore. There you go. What we can do for you is if you're in, say you're doing the 14 day Japan intensive and you have no sea days and you're at port every single day, but there's a place you really want to go. Our concierge will actually take you off the ship if you wanted to do a two day land trip and then they'll bring you back to a different port and bring you back on the ship. So if you have places you really want to see or say there's two sea days and you want to be out touring and not on the ship, they will do that for you as a private concierge and bring you back. Some of us like the sea days to relax, but we don't get many on this cruise line. So we do try to make sure you're at port as much as possible. But if you do decide you want more, we'll do more. We partner with people like Mikado Safaris in Africa and just upscale products we know you're going to want to use. And then, of course, your shore excursions. To answer everyone's questions, we have every cost, style, and level of ability for a shore excursion, I would say almost there is. So you could do a shore excursion for $20, or you can go on a private helicopter for something that most of us can't afford. But I, except for when my husband got mad because I did it. The, <laughs> but it's actually not that unaffordable. But they range from, you know, if you wanted to do wine and food cultural tours, you can. If you want to do nature tours, you can. If you want to do something specific, you know you wanted to go to a specific wine region, or you're going to see, you know, you're in, I don't know, Africa, and you wanted to go walking with the elephants, we offer that too. So very interesting different things. Does anyone golf? Yes, a little bit. So we partner with Perry Golf. If you've ever wanted to golf all over the world, we take you. You can actually bring your clubs and forget them. They will actually take care of tee times and take getting your clubs where you need to be and where you're going. And they do everything. We have 50 ports that we golf in, everywhere from you know Japan to Edinburgh and Dublin to Barcelona, Rome, even Dubai. So if you've ever wanted to golf away, it's a really nice opportunity. Both people in the cabin do not have to golf, but there's only 60 golfers per sailing for these trips. And this is the only sample itinerary I brought you because there's books in the center and you guys are going to have plenty of things to get tested on later. So, but just to show you on a sailing like this, this is a golf sailing. Now, I guess most people who know about golf because my dad did this three days a week my whole life. He was like a lunatic who had to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning for some random tea time because he couldn't golf at 2 in the afternoon. They do that here too. So if you see, you're overnighting in Edinburgh. You're overnighting in Glasgow. You're overnighting in Belfast. So you've got four overnights on this and in Dublin. And all those mornings, the golfers go out. So they're out golfing really early. They come back because they don't want to miss the rest of the day in port. But it's a nice example, because look at these times you're leaving. 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 8 p.m., and four overnights. This one day at sea, you're probably exhausted, and you'll get room service all three meals. I just, there's, it's just kind of a perfect opportunity with what to do. We always have sales that happen, but we partner with Travel Smiths because we trust them. And we give them specials no one else has. So whether you're joining a group, because we are going to plan a group for 2026, or whether you're doing it on your own with you know, 13 to 70 of your closest friends, and we will take care of all of you, we have things that only they get. So exclusive onboard credits, exclusive deals just for you guys. So do make sure no matter what you're doing, you're checking first with what they have going on, because everything is in there. Now, everyone has to take that little card that I gave you because we have homework. Well, it's kind of right here work, not homework. And if you have your pen, grab your pen. It's going to be very quick. And if they didn't provide you a pen, steal the person next to you as we won't tell them. All I want you to do is just write your name on it. No information, just your name. And number one and a number two. 
So you only have to write two things. Not one, but two. Yes. It's not so hard. Two things is not a lot to ask. Number one, and you might have to think about it for a second. What is the favorite destination you've ever been to? Ever been to? Yeah. I'd have one thing, but if I had to think about the Indian Ocean, I'd have a whole other thing, and then I'd have to it think about It doesn't have your... to be, like, perfect. It's just, what, what was your most memorable destination you went to? Maybe I won't say favorite. I'll say most memorable. memorable. My most memorable is definitely not my favorite. Okay. <laughs> but, yes. Wait, wait, wait. I'd love to know what that is. That's one more so, <laughs> I'm one of, all right, so I'm a statistic, right? I have a practice husband. And a lot of people I have are thinking. a second husband. So when I first got divorced from my practice husband, I was like 28, and I wanted to know what I was capable of. So I went to Iceland all by myself in the middle of February, left the kids home with him, and decided I was going to see the Northern Lights on a five-day glacier trekking expedition. So I went with some creepy guy that I've never seen before, up uh, with 10 other people on a flight to the tip of Esfjordur in Iceland. And I parked there for three days with my tail freezing in the winter to see the Northern Lights. On the third night, they came out. They were kind of mediocre. I got yelled at the whole time by this guy because he was like, you Americans can't be alone with your own thoughts. Just sit. I was like, OK. But I made it through. And when we came back, he told me that I was one of the like five American females that actually made it through the whole trip. Most of them went home, but I stayed. So he was like, good on, because I guess they just were mean on purpose because they thought it was funny. Um, and this was back in like, you know, to, way before there were like rules against being mean to people. So I won't date myself and say how old I am. I just look really good for my age. But it's, uh, it was an interesting experience. And when I came home, I was kind of rejuvenated because I felt like, oh, I could do anything if I was able to do this. So. That was my most memorable experience, and it definitely wasn't my favorite. Okay. Well, I like that. Did everybody write down their most memorable experience? Good. Okay, okay. good. Up. So number two. Number two. If we were to put a group together in 2026, knowing that Azamara goes everywhere, and secretly including Alaska to be launched very soon, but we go all over the world. So if Alaska you Alaska when? 2026. 2026. Yeah. Oh. So you might be planned for this year and maybe say next year, but dream vacations, where you've always wanted to go. It doesn't have to be somewhere as America goes. It could be anywhere. If you could pick anywhere you wanted to go, where would it be in 2026? Oh. And I have prizes for the answers. Oh, you do. I do. I know. Is it a backpack or a lot? Hmm? Is it the blue ball or is it the... What? Is it the blue ball or is it the backpacks? We can give them all away. Hmm? We can give them all away. Oh, we can. Yeah. Right. Don't tell them I'm not taking them home. <laughs> oh, that's good. I don't want you to take any of them home. Okay. okay. So I have three very pretty backpacks. Vanna White. <laughs> <laughs> I do, right? <laughs> so, the first trip, we'll talk about number one. How many people in the room, the destination that you wrote down, booked it with Travel Smiths? Oh. One. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she was first. All right. She's getting a backpack. All right, Suzanne. What destination? Ireland in April. Very cool. So you had a special experience listening to the trip that you might have gone on. We do go to Ireland, too. OK, for your second Wait, trip. Can you talk about that Ireland trip? Yeah. So for Ireland, which I know I spoke about for a minute, but we have two or three. So when it comes to Ireland and Scotland, this one is a combination British Isles. We also have country-intensive Scotland, country-intensive Ireland, which means all 11 days are spent in the same country. 
So if you're going to do, a con and they are in those larger books that were in the center. So when you're looking at the itineraries, if you don't want to do, so this one you're looking at three ports in Scotland, two ports in the UK, and then three in Ireland. And the Isle of Man is kind of like its own planet. Thank you. I don't know what that's considered. The Isle of Man, is that considered what? Ireland? The Isle of Man? Yeah. No. Part is of it, by, but is it considered its own country? I don't think it is. No, but you have a full Ireland tour. Yep. Uh, a full I have the Ireland full tour. Ireland intensive tour. So one of the nice parts about cruising to Ireland, and I'll say this because I've done it in quite a few of the European destinations, whether it was Iceland or Scotland, there's a difference between different styles of travel. With cruising, you unpack once. And you don't have to worry about it. But with 10 and 11 hours per day in port, if there's something inland you want to see, you're going to be able to get there to see it and to come back. And as you sleep at night, your ship is moving. So it does take a lot of the stress of the driving and everywhere out of the picture. So like you can't. That's why the land went first. Yes. <laughs> So if you are not interested in driving from place to place, you don't have to. You can sail while you're sleeping or while you're having a glass of wine just looking at the gorgeous scenery. And Can I ask you a question about, wait a minute, you, you are all inclusive, but yes. how many, um, because I understand, I, I know that you have a plethora of wines and champagnes that yes. people can have but so we have two drink packages we have our standard drink package and then we have another elevated drink package as well so if you're very picky you can have the elevated drink package i think it's like 15 dollars a day more um someone like me is fine because we do locally provision as well so if you're taking a trip with us in europe it's european wines that you're going to be having so you always want to make sure you're double checking but if you know that maybe one or two times during the sailing you just want to have you know, a specific glass, you pay the difference, you have that glass and you're fine. If you know you're going to want it every single night, then you're better off upgrading. But when we do certain promotions, we give away drink packages and free Wi-Fi and free everything. And it's just, it's really nice. And when you're part of a group, you usually will get the elevated drink package anyway. So if we do run a group, you'll have it. And you talked about what our promotion was with yes. Travel Smiths. Yep. So unless, like I said, at the end with Travel Smiths, you get, and not many of us can go into an ocean view. If you like the quietness of the ocean view, you'll get $150 on board credit in addition, $200 for a veranda, and $250 on board for any suite category. Now, we have a category called Veranda Plus. So if you don't need a suite, but you want the amenities of the suite, so maybe you don't need the space, but you want to have everything that comes with the suite, the elevated drink package and all the different concierge levels. You can book a veranda plus, have all of those things still be in the balcony cabin, in the veranda cabin, or when you get a suite, you get amenities that come with your suite as well. You know, and we're butler, waiting for concierge. And, but we're waiting for 2026 to dates. come out. Correct. And if it's passed, because you said they're not coming out till September, yeah. will you offer the same? Correct amenities yep. for travel smiths because yep. we're waiting. Absolutely. We're waiting. So we're going to, I know we're waiting. We're I ready. know. I know exactly what you want, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we are ready. So we have our lists ready to go. I will tell you the reason we're waiting is there was a lot of, you know, talk about different deployments and things, and we have a world cruise coming. So it was just waiting to finalize certain aspects of the world cruise. So if you want to spend 155 days with us, you can. How much is that? I don't How know. much is that? Um, 300 times 155. So How much? It's probably about 40,000. It's not atrociously it's expensive. Not atrociously I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not pocket change, but it's not. <laughs> but, <laughs> Yes, it's not it does come with the upgraded drink package. Though. Wait, what'd you say? Everywhere. What'd you say, Gary? <laughs> money well spent. Yeah, right. Money well spent. <laughs> upgraded drink package included for the world cruise. <laughs> but keep in mind, the world cruise comes with $2,500 in onboard credit. It comes with the elevated drink package. It comes with airfare. So we're going to make it worth your while to move into the ship with us. Okay. All right. So. Yep. Wait. 
for everybody's question two, for our uh -oh. next pie. Uh oh. How many of everybody's trip for 2026 that you've been dying to go to, who wrote down Ireland? <laughs> one young lady over Just here, one. right over here. One. Okay, she gets a lip balm. I am. Oh, sorry. Right, Grab right, a lip balm. Yeah. A lip balm because you specifically said Ireland. They come very much in handy. Just don't leave it in your glove compartment. It will melt. <laughs> a lip balm. I don't know from firsthand experience about melting it in the car either. Huh? And then, okay. How many people I got a lot 2026? I got a lot more. Pick somewhere in Africa. Africa? Oh, I got Africa over there. Just one? I got one. Hey, she's getting a backpack. Ooh. I'm just going to alternate. Okay. By the way, we go to Africa. We have an Africa intensive for you to check out. So come with us. Okay. Next question. How many people for their 2026 are going to Europe? Well, we got a few Europe. Here we go. Let's go with our lip bombs. Here we go. How many you need? <laughs> Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Hands up. I brought Europe lots of right prizes. there. I got you. Russ, I got you. No. Push them off. Go ahead, lip bombs over. We That's got a lot Arctic. of lip bombs over here. Yeah. Who else? Right back there, baby. I'm coming. You got them. Here. I'm getting slow in my old age. Rach, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. We're keep coming more. Keep your hands more. up. All right. <laughs> She's got more. Take them out. We got more back there. I they were Christmas ornaments. <laughs> <laughs> they are not Christmas ornaments. And we have one more backpack. Thank you. Who else was had their hands up that I didn't get to yet? All right. Hand up. Hands up. It's a lip balm. Everybody didn't got them? All right. Last backpack. We're ready. All right. Um, this is going to be an Azamara question. Now I'm going to see if anybody was listening. And the first person to tell me, how many ships does Azamara have? He was right there. He got it. <laughs> OK. Does anyone have questions for me? 2026, we want, we're launching Alaska, correct. Ah, well, I have a couple questions yep. back here. Next one. Before you leave, pass Miss me or Miss Sally your cards. May I have your cards? So we can see them. Cards, cards, cards. It was unbelievable. Thank you, thank you. I did the, I did the Portugal and the southern coast of Spain. It was fabulous. Another question, someone had their hand up. Yes. No, we do have a few interior cabins. Um, for people who need it to be dark, they are a little larger than the ones on the exterior. So you can do an interior cabin. Oh, well, some people like to put their, oh, one thing. A lot of cruise lines that are like this do not allow children. We are not one of the cruise lines that does not allow children. We do allow children. We have a lot of multi-generational families that will come and people like my brother who waited forever to have kids, he wouldn't be able to go with us if we all went. But we don't have facilities for children. We don't have kids clubs or babysitting or anything. And the children have to be well behaved or they will be spoken to. So <laughs> in the nine years, I do believe one family might have been asked to leave. But yeah. One in nine years, that's pretty good that I know of. But they do have to be well behaved because we don't have, so parents can't go out and go on excursions and expect somebody to watch their kids. So if you do know, we usually see more around the holidays, Christmas and that kind of time frame, but not very often. Yes, question this way. No, no casino on board. Huh? 
Yep, we have a pool, we have a spa, wellness center, just no casino. Yes. Um, no, not in Bordeaux, we actually pull right in. There are some places you have to tender, but most places we're able to dock. Yeah. So they have a, they do have a surcharge, but I don't think it's very expensive. I don't yeah. know what it is. It's, yeah, it's most. Tell me about your medicine supplements. I always have prices in the books. So, good question. For those of you that know solo travelers, for a single supplement, they range from 200% if it's busy down to 120%. So we do offer specials repeatedly of no solo. So you gotta just let us know to look for them for you and we can get them. Yeah. Minus the taxes and all of that, you would pay double the cruise fare, like an eight thousand. But but you never want to you never want to book when it's at two hundred percent, and you always want to have your advisor call us to to get that waived. Yeah, we 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 work with people, so we make sure that yeah. Some of us have a little bit of pull. Yeah. Yes. Yes, microphone. Once again, thank you very much for coming. I appreciate all of you for coming on. You could have been anywhere else, but you're here. Thank you. Thank you.